For this look at differentiated instructional strategies, we return to East Elementary School in Kansas City to visit the classroom of Stephanie Kerr. Mrs. Kerr is a second year teacher and this year is teaching in an ESL classroom. She has found that the way she groups students for learning activities can greatly enhance the effectiveness of her instruction. Mrs. Kerr groups her students so that their performance level, interests, and knowledge bases are complementary. In addition, when grouping students, she considers not only their instructional needs, but their emotional and personal needs as well. For this video, Mrs. Kerr will use several instructional strategies to ensure that all students are engaged in learning. Those strategies include encouraging self-evaluation and critical thinking, accommodating multiple intelligences and providing for various learning styles. Now, Mrs. Kerr will introduce her lesson. Oh, that was very good. Let's My name is Stephanie Kerr and this is a Success for All reading group. Our district has adopted the Success for All reading program. So this is actually a group of fourth and fifth graders who are all pretty much on the same reading level and we will be doing a reading lesson that is about 90 minutes in length on a daily basis we do these things. This year I am an ESL teacher. So uh, the majority of these students are ESL students and students that do need differentiated instruction and they tend to be with me simply because um, my job dictates that I might actually be able to make the accommodations easier considering that I am an ESL teacher. So um, I try to include a lot of kinesthetic opportunities, um, but something that I've really noticed with the differentiated instruction is that I rely a lot on student responses. I ask them a lot, how did that work? How did you like that? Should we do it again? And so I think that's something that you'll notice that I will do is say, you know, how do you think we should do it today and get their opinion on that so that I can actually meet their needs better. Um, there's several parts to this lesson. I start off with some vocabulary work and uh, move into um, some listening. They do some listening skills, reading, and then they will do some partner reading and then they'll have some discussion. They're sitting in groups and that also helps me differentiate because they're able to work in their groups to kind of meet their individual needs so that I don't have to do all of that work myself. I can actually empower them to help me differentiate and meet their needs. Okay, let's get started with our vocabulary review. Let's see, I will be calling upon the flowers. Can the flowers please step up? And the white ninjas, please come up to the front and show me dense. Show me the word dense. Show me, show me, are they dense yet? No, they're not dense yet. Okay, dense, denser, dense, dense, dense. Is that dense? Yes, it is. Thank you, show me not dense. Ah, very nice, very nice. Okay, please return to your seats. Give your team a point for being so brave. Let's see, can you please stand up, push in your chair, stand behind your chairs. And can I call on someone from the polka dots? Someone from the polka dots. Can you give me a good habit? Give me a good habit. Doing your homework is a good habit. Can you give me a bad habit? Bad habit. Eating a lot of candy? That is a bad habit. It is a very bad habit. Thank you. Allowance. Hey, flowers, flowers. Does anybody in this team get an allowance? What do you do to get an allowance? I do my laundry. You do the dishes and do the laundry, clean the house. What is an allowance? What do they give you when you do your chores? What do they give you? What is it? Money. money. Yeah, probably money. Maybe privileges. Maybe you get to go to the movies or something like that. Um, I need to hear from the white ninjas. White ninjas. Um, who would like to be brave from the White Ninjas and come show me Staggered? Kyle, you have done Staggered so well this week. Give it to me. He's weaving from side to side, maybe. 
He looks a little like maybe he's going to fall down. Okay, very nice. Give your team a point for being so brave. Here is this, the pomegranate. All right, let's get our pomegranate. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's big. It's like maybe about the size of um, mm, grapefruit, maybe. All right, we need to chop it in half. Chop it in half. Let's split it open. Okay, we want to eat this thing, right, because it's tasty. But there are lots and lots of seeds in it, so don't forget to spit your seeds out. Okay, ready? Take a bite. Mm, very tasty. Okay, let's set our pomegranate down. Um, civilization. Mm, this word, civilization. What is the <coughs> civilization that we're talking about in our book this week? Who is our civilization? Night wolves. What is the civilization? Egypt, what kind of Egypt? Ancient, ancient Egypt is right. We're not talking about Egypt right now. I mean, this is like ancient. This is like thousands of years ago. Chaos. Give me an example. Golden girls of chaos. Fighting. Fighting. Yes. Can you give another one? Burning. Yeah, yeah, like burning things, crazy things. Okay, are you ready to say our words? Are you ready to say it? I need to hear you. And we haven't conjured. Maybe we need to go ahead and conjure up our awake before we do this. Should we do that? Yeah. All right, ready? And you might even want to get some movement in your hands when you conjure. We're conjuring up this morning. We're conjuring awake and excitement is what we're conjuring. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, here it is. We have conjured up awake and excitement. So. Everybody is very awake and excited today. Let's say our words. Dense. Dense. Let's say it again. Dense. Dense. Okay. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Mm -hmm. Allowance. 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 Conjure. 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 Staggered. 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 All right, here's the big one. Here's the big one. I'm going to take it slow. Say it after me. Palm a gran it. Palm a gran it. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Nice. That is so much better than the beginning of the week. Here's another big one. Civilization. 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 And here we are with chaos. Yeah. Oh, that was very good. Let's have a seat. Thank you. You guys are very awake. I'm glad that we conjured up our awake this morning. Now we need to start getting some points. And I have some questions that I want to ask you. And the first question is for the polka dots. Polka dots, mm, let's see, one, two, three, four. 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 Okay, you know who we are? You know who we are. Um, polka dots number one. I would like to know, what if I don't know what a word means? What if I read it and I'm like, mm, I don't know what I, I don't know what I just read. I don't know what it means. Polka dots, number one. Do you remember what the first thing that we do is if we don't know what something means? Don't forget your resources. You've got more than one resource. You've got your card and... Reread it. Okay, we could reread it. We could, we could. Polka dot number two. What else could we do? Use clues from the sentence. Use clues from the sentence. Thank you. Give your team a point. And I would like number three from the Golden Girls. Can you remind me number three? Golden Girl number three. Can you remind me? What are those clues from the sentence called? Do you remember what those are called? They sure are context clues. Give your team a point for that. So we could reread it. We could use our context clues. Flowers, number two. Flowers, number two. What if we still don't get it? What if we still don't get it? We could reread it. Or we could keep, we could just keep reading, right? We could just keep going because maybe there are more clues in the next sentence, right? What if I still don't know? 
What if I still, still don't know? And I'm thinking of a number three, and I'm thinking of the white ninjas. Hey, number three, what are we going to do? Okay, so we could use the stuff that we already know. And what do we call that stuff that we already know? Background. Yeah, it's and our knowledge. background knowledge. And what if I still, still don't know what it's called? Number three, night wolves, give it to me. What am I going to do? I'm going to make a picture in my mind, right? I'm going to picture it in my mind and see. Remember when we were talking about chaos and I said, close your eyes and picture people running around and screaming and all kinds of crazy stuff happening. That was a picture in your mind, right? We can use those when we're reading to help us figure stuff out that we do not already know. We are reading Tut Tut and we're talking about these people and they go back in time. Um, are they happy about going back in time? That's what I really want to know. They didn't seem very happy about it, but maybe they're getting happy about it. Maybe they're getting excited. They were in danger last time, right? They're like, hey, I don't want to be in danger again. I don't want to do this all over again. But they found this book, and now suddenly they're in ancient Egypt. All right, you are going to listen to me. You are going to follow along. And when I get stuck, I'm going to be calling on some of you using my cards to help me. Because I think I'm going to get to a part where there's a word maybe that I can't pronounce. Or if I don't know what something means, they're going to help me figure it out. I'm going to use my cards so you don't have to um, be like, ooh, ooh, OK? Can you find page 8 for me, please? OK, and I've got this picture here. Looks like chaos in this picture. I don't, I don't know what's going on in this picture. I mean, I see the trio. <coughs> hmm, interesting. For all of the times we've time warped, I've never gotten used to it. It's like dreaming you're falling, floating in the ocean, and spinning in one of those awful teacup rides at the carnival all at once. For all the times we've Time warped? What does that mean, time warped? I don't know if I understand that. Time warped. Warped. Does that mean like they're bending? Because it looks like they're bending, but what does that mean, time warped? Hmm, Golden Girls, help me out. What do you think? Um, traveling in time. Oh, they're traveling in time. How did you know that, Dekanti? Because it says time. Oh. So that word before was a clue for you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you picked up on that. Thank you for pointing it out to me because I was confused. Fred adjusted his Blue Jays cap and jumped to his feet. Check this out. Statues, paintings. Hero, hero, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic. Chunk it. Ah, chunk it. Okay, let me see if that works. He row gly picks. Hero gly picks. Blend it. Hero gly picks. Does that work? <coughs> Does anybody know how to say that word? How do I say that word? Kyle, help me. Hieroglyphics. Hi hieroglyphics. Does that sound right? Yes. Let me try that again. I'm gonna reread it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hieroglyphics, okay. Check this out. Statues, paintings, hieroglyphics. We must be back in King Tut's tomb. Thank you for helping me. That was a hard word. Surprise, surprise, said Sam. I'm going to stop here. You will be, you will be reading page 12 and 13. I'm going to have you read pages... 14 to 18, silent, okay, and when you are done, let's go back and reread page 12 to 18 silent, or silently for fluency, 
And I'm looking for transitions, guys. Remember how you can just move from one thing to the other without needing any assistance from me? I'm looking for that kind of independence. All right, have your team sheets out so I can come around. And I would like ones to remember, you're starting, with now, you're starting on the last sentence on page 11. You're ending with now go. Twos, you start with the, you end with good. Threes, you start with my, you end with laughing. Uh, fours, you start with he, you end with hats, mat. Hats, mat. That's kind of hard to say. It's a lot of hats, mat. We know what we're reading. Do you know what you're reading? Do you know? Let's look at our team talk questions so we know what to look for when we're reading. Let's look at our team talk questions. First of all, let's look at number one. Can you give me one tut, please? Tut! What number are we on? One. One. Okay. Choose the sentence that states the problem in tut, tut. So is it Sam, Fred, and Joe can't open the book? Uh, here's this book again. Cleo chewed the book's front cover. Sam, Fred, and Joe need to find the book. Anna, Cleo, and Cleo. Or D, Hats, Matt, Hats, Matt is stuck in the tomb. Hmm, interesting. We're not answering yet. We're just thinking. And when you read, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Number two. Give me two tuts. Tut, tut. What number are we on? Two. Yes, we are. Do you think the author wants you to like hat snat? Why or why not? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. You guys, I just realized something. Are these questions context clues for us? Can we get clues about what kinds of things we're going to be reading about? Yes. Just by looking at our Teen Talk questions? Yes. It kind of focuses our thoughts, doesn't it? Interesting, interesting. Okay, I'm going to be assigning team points based on discussion, based on how well you're talking. So if you're using nice voices when you talk, okay, let me ask you something. We have been doing our team talk questions this week kind of in the way that we practiced with the comment story where I say, okay, let's take three minutes to discuss and now two minutes to write. How we do it structured or do you like it better to where your team can just move at your own pace? I want you to think about that because I want you to decide how we're going to do it today. Think about it. Do you know how we're going to do it? Think about it. Think about it. You might even want to just give yourself a little poke just to make sure that you're really thinking about it. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you want to do it the same way we've been doing it before, yesterday, where I give you the structure. Or would you like to do it more independently with your teams, where your teams move at their own pace? Give me a thumbs up if you want to do it how we did it yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you want to do it how we did it yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you want to move at your own team pace. Okay, so if we're moving at our own team pace, let me just say this. I want you to focus on writing your own answers, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah? But you're really going to need to have some super discussion so you can write your super answers, okay? All right, readers, let's go. And if you break one tiny amulet or shall a bit Shabti. Oh, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Thanks for helping with that, Miss Ayo. Shabti. And if you for being my name, the grass, grass, hat, hat, snack. We could have sworn the guy had said.
Nice transition today, guys. That was awesome. You knew exactly the move from your partner reading to your silent reading. You guys did that flawlessly today. When all of your team members have finished, you may go ahead and get started on your team talk questions. While you're waiting for your team members to finish, you can go back and reread for fluency. Okay, if you guys have not reached the bottom of page 18, but most of your team members have. I'd like you to go ahead and get started on your team talk questions. I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. And this just gives you an idea of how to pace yourselves. Because we've been talking in our conferencing about how we need help pacing ourselves a little bit better. So I'm setting the timer here for five minutes. And that just gives you a, a loose guideline of how long to spend on each question. When that buzzer goes off, you might want to consider wrapping up your discussion and moving on to the next question. Okay? So I'd like to see a lot of you going ahead and getting started with your discussion. I'm walking around and I'm listening for good discussion. I'm listening for good problem solving. I'm listening for you pointing things out in the book. These are the things that I am listening for, and this is how you're earning your team points today. Okay. Find what is in the book. Find it. Find your clues. Show me the clues. About they cannot find the book. Okay. Okay, so you're identifying two different problems here. Here's what I want you to think about to, to decide between those two. Who are the more important characters of the story? Do you think the trio is more important? Or do you think Hasnat is more important? The trio. Does that help you make a decision? Yes. Okay, good, good. Nice. So you noticed what it didn't say. And first. right here it said, um, it, it said that um, there was no book. Exactly. No yes. Yes. So are we supposed to like this guy, Hasnat? No. You don't think so? Why? Because he, he loves. He's trying to take over the world. Okay, show me. Where does it say? Show me. Show me the words that make you think that Hasnat, not a good guy. Well, he was talking to himself. Mm. Like an evil guy. Hey, good. Find it. I want you to show your team those words. Let's see. It's Let's over see. here. Let's see. Two but, guys um, hustled off and left their leader. So he is an insulting man. Let's. Yeah. Can you find him in that picture? Uh, right there. Is he an attractive man? No. Is he good looking? No. Is he, you know, nice looking? He will go take a mud bath. So he looks he looks a little evil, right? Yeah. Hmm. Could those be clues to show you whether or not we're supposed to like him? Like evil guys in the movie. Mm -hmm. Always do and I knew he was up to exactly. no good. So all you, oh, he was up to no good. Those are very good words. Can you put those words in your own words when you write your answer? Okay. Which dish has the best words? Thank you. Okay, I want to stop here for one second because I'm not sure we're going to get all of these done today because we had a lot of reading in today's uh, part. But I do want to ask some teams to share really quickly because I noticed that everybody pretty much is done with one and two and I heard some really good discussions and I want to hear what you have to say about number one. Night Wolves, what did you guys think for number one? C. You thought C, okay, okay. Um, would you or somebody else in your team like to share why you guys decided that C was the best answer? Because um, they had to find the book and um, the boy's sister because they were both lost. Okay. And they needed a good home. Okay, good. Um, 
find some words that show me he's evil. Find them. Find those words that show me how evil Hat Snat is. Find those words. Put your finger on them. Put your finger on them. Okay, Aisha, what words? Quick. In the movies. Okay, so then they start talking to himself like evil guys in the movies. So he's talking to himself, which makes me think maybe he's crazy. Right here, Golden Girls, what words did you find? My plan will work for fishing. Aha! His plan will work to perfection. He's got a plan. Is it a good plan? No. Is it a plan to like help people, maybe feed people who are hungry? What is this plan that he has? He has a plan to like, uh, destroy the world. Oh, or to make that's not likable, is it? What did you guys find? What did you guys find, ninjas? It says he's all he's all talking to himself like and he's all like hat snap the gray hat snap the wonderful Ah so he's definitely really into himself, isn't he? Don't you know anybody like that who's like they just think that they're the bomb, you know, they just think they're the best. And everything they say is like I'm awesome and you're not. That's not likable, is it? Nope. Now, I want to hear from this team, because this team found the picture of Hat Snat. Where did you find him? What page? Right. Okay, and which one do you think he is? Which one do you think is Hat Snat? The one with like pyramid head. Oh, the one with the pyramid head. Interesting. Hey, does he look like a happy man? No. Does he look like a nice man? No. Does he look like somebody you'd want to hang out with? No. <laughs> Show me that look on his face. Can you show me that look on his face? That's good. That's good. That's good. Show me the look. Oh, Addison, that's a good look. That is a good look. Okay, so we don't like, that's not likable, right? We don't necessarily want to be around people that go around with that kind of scowl on their face. Show me a face of somebody that we would like, that would be likable. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yes, that is very likable. Okay, now... Just so I can remind myself, show me half snap. Show me half snap. That's good. That's good. Half snap, not a pleasant person, right? Right? Okay, so we do not like half snap. All right, here is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and discuss number three, see if you can get an answer down for number three. Okay, wait. I think it went very well. They're really getting into this book, which is very exciting for me because this book is actually slightly difficult for them so it's kind of um, one of those efforts to push them at the end of the quarter just to kind of see how far they can go with their thinking and they're doing phenomenally well there's a lot of hard words in this book that they're figuring out a lot of tough concepts they haven't learned about ancient Egypt yet so for them to be able to make connections and understand what's going on is a pretty big thing for me. I'm really excited about it. The differentiated parts of the lesson work well because something that I have learned to do is allow them to help me differentiate. So I've actually given them some of the power to do that. And when I give them the power to do that, I can actually differentiate more and meet their needs better because they're guiding the lesson. It's their lesson. And I'm just kind of, you know, there to, to proctor it. But they lead me in what I do. I would definitely recommend differentiated instruction to, for ESL teachers because something that I noticed, and I don't know if you noticed, but a large part of my room is ESL and special ed. And they do that. They put them together not because they want to lump them together, perhaps, but because the teachers who teach those children are generally more used to using differentiated instruction. Um, I have ESL students that speak the same native language, but they're not in the same place in their learning. Or they don't struggle with the same things of language acquisition. I have a student that has struggles immensely with writing and vocabulary and speaking, but his critical thinking is so far above everybody else that 
you know, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses, and that just because they have the same native language or just because they have the same struggles or they're in the same grade or in their state, the same place in life doesn't mean that they learn the same way. It doesn't mean that they like the same things. It doesn't mean their attention goes to the same things. So I noticed with differentiated instruction that with the ESL students, that it's, it's not even a, a matter of whether or not I should use it. It has to be everything that I do. I mean, everything that I do is differentiated. And I notice, and this year, that, that was a big kind of learning experience for me, where I said, hmm, you know, I need to differentiate so much that maybe I can't do all of this on my own. I need to start training them as teachers and modeling how they need to be teachers for them to actually help me differentiate and also help each other figure out what they need from me and from the people around them. So this process, the routines and the procedures that you saw, I actually use in all of my classes. Um, it is part of the SFA program that we use here for reading, but these procedures and routines, the cooperative learning, the team points, I use it for everything that I do. The way that I talk about active listening, all of these things, because once they know the procedures, they hardly need me at all. I mean, I don't mean that they don't need me at all, but they can guide the process so much better. And I notice that I can learn so much from them when they can really take control of things.